Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here at my next uh, Transformers Robots in Disguise 2015 episode review. This one's going to be for 108, um, what's it called, True Colors and a 109 Rumble in the Jungle. Those two episodes aired this weekend. So first up, uh, True Colors. The, I was a little bit disappointed with this episode um, because it really highlighted kind of like something that really shows the show is maybe not maybe what I think it's going to be just just a typical idea of you know you start off an episode and come back from this mission and Grimlock's controlled by someone else it was so obvious that it wasn't him doing this and it was just he was being controlled by someone else and um, because there was a lead into it like if there really was going to be some big turn from Grimlock I think they would have led into it more and done a lot uh, more to really set that up so it really instantly took away any kind of intensity that the episode had just knowing that oh it's all a misunderstanding they're all going to realize towards the end of the episode that it's something controlling him whether it be a power of one of the Decepticons or something else and it turned out to be this mini con called uh what was it called um but whatever it was it's this kind of spider mini con thing that was controlling him um, once it bites them, when it can control them, and you know what this episode did have going for it was that it it had Steeljaw in the episode, it had him and Thunderhoof planning something, and that's that's interesting that they're they're at the very least setting up something in the background that the villains are doing. They're trying to form this team, so they're trying to get all this, all the Decepticons that the Autobots have captured. So they were looking for Underbite and whoever else they had, and they, they managed to get Underbite and kind of run off, but um, the little spider thing was captured in the process, and Steel John Thunderhoof got away. But they now have Underbite with them, so, you know, the Decepticon team is slowly, slowly forming. Um, but I really would like to know what the whole plan is sooner rather than later because I think the show really, really needs an idea about what's happening going forward. Um, but other than that, you know, it was a fairly standard episode. You know, of course, you had Sideswipe be the one who is Grimlock's real you know, friend. He doesn't believe that Grimlock could ever just turn on them after all they've been through in the first couple of episodes. And he has faith in him while... You know, Strongarm was all set to, you know, capture him, take him down straight away, and Bumblebee's kind of just in the middle. So, you know, it was an interesting team reaction to what was going on, but um, in general, it, it was just a bit, a um, little bit by the numbers. There wasn't really anything of note. Like, the, as much as the, the, the Grimlock being controlled was meant to be played as this really intense moment, it just didn't really have that because there was no real build or anything like that. They, they addressed that the, what Grimlock was in the pod for was for some property damage, which is just what he's like because of being a Dinobot. He's clumsy. He probably did that. doesn't explain why he had Decepticon logos on him in the first place. Um, now, what seems to be happening potentially in the series is that most of the Decepticons that are captured here have the logos on them. Steeljaw scratched his off and scratched Thunderhost off. Um, so maybe they're going for the idea that the Autobots just captured these people, who the, these um, Cybertronians, who committed crimes and marked them as Decepticons, even though they necessarily weren't part of the Decepticon movement, potentially. And it's an Autobot problem that they've done this, and so Sealjaw scratches it off, but later on is perhaps going to actually accept the Decepticon logo as his own, or else basically... That Decepticon logo with scratches through it is going to be the new kind of steel job Decepticon logo. But I don't really know. They're setting up something which I quite like, but overall the episode wasn't the best. Uh, 109 Rumbles in the Jungle, today's episode. Um, much better. Uh, I thought this was a far superior episode in that there was at least some character stuff to it. Strong Arm Saint on her first solo mission. Bumblebee is very protective and goes along with her and it just annoys her. And the whole idea of the episode is that, you know, okay, Strongheart was meant to fulfill her mission on her own, but once Bumblebee was actually there, she was obsessed with doing everything on her own, like that, the, putting the whole mission at risk, regardless of how serious it was, because she wanted to prove herself. And I really liked that ultimately the big event in the episode was that when she asked Bumblebee who was there, 
to actively help her. You know, don't just be an observer. I want you to actually help me. That was what passed Bumblebee. Basically, Bumblebee passed her on her first solo mission because of that. Because she, you know, on her first mission was a team player enough to admit that, okay, I need help here. And really, I suppose, if, uh, that's the idea of any solo mission, is that you, you're, effectively your leader is sending you out to do a job, and by all means, if the mission goes well on your own, fine, but if you realize you're probably going to need some help, don't be afraid to ask for that help, even though you're on a quote-unquote solo mission. So I I like that as the kind of lesson that Strongarm learned at the end of the episode, and that she seems to be... Um, uh, learning now whether or not the series actually has the continuity to make that a big deal now that you know it, it is a potential that Strongarm will get a promotion going forward and not become a cadet anymore I'm not really sure because I'd actually like that to happen I think the first one she said was like Sergeant Strongarm so th that'd be like really interesting if they ever got go down that road but uh, so it, it was a it was a pretty fun episode the um who was it, it was like Springload I think or Bring arm? I'm not really sure, because um, you know, a lot of the Decepticons here are fairly one note. But uh, this guy is pretty fun. You know, he's basically he's basically a frog in his normal mode, and then transforms into a kind of a, a trailer. No, um, oh my god, what am I? Why why am I struggling so hard to describe what type of car he turned into? It was it was a truck with a. Thing on the back. Uh, I'm completely blanking on that word and I apologize, but um, anyway, uh, th that was interesting. And the big thing here is that he's a, basically a relic hunter. He thinks he's at this kind of Doradus place on Cybertron, which is, it's got like the well of eternal energy on or something like that, which was pretty funny. And um, he's obsessed with spirits, and so in the end, Strongarm uses the spirity voice and uh, the giant pillar to kind of uh, distract him and Bumblebee, uh, and she make the save. So. That, that 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 was interesting. Kind of just his character, the way he was. He was um, he was always acting like the spirits are like against him. When like when like he he constantly thinks that he's he's beaten the Autobots and then they're back and he's just like, what do I have to do? Is this like a curse against me or something like that? So there there was some fun dialogue from this Decepticon this time round. Um, but obviously he's, he was captured and. Um, I assume they somehow managed to get him back or, an el or else they seal him in this place for good. I'm not really sure if they'll even explain the logistics of that. But um, like, as for whether or not we'll see him again or which of the Decepticons we will and won't see again, it's pretty up in the air. I don't really, I'm not really sure what, they're, what way they're going with that. But then on the other side of the episode, you had this, um, this um, kind of conflict between Denny and Fixit about, you know, Denny wants to work on Cybertronian technology and Fixit's like, no, you're a human, you can't understand it. Denny wants to prove himself and causes a few accidents. And to counter this, Fixit starts to mess with Denny's scrapyard and how it's organized and they have this rivalry. Then Russell, Grimlock and Sideswipe basically get the Decepticon Hunter, which they found in the previous episode, love the continuity that they're bringing this weapon back and addressing the fact that it wasn't working the best. And they put the kazoo in it, which was a kind of thing in the episode, and acts like it's going to explode. And then the two of them have to work together to open it and fix it. And they take the kazoo out, and then they actually together realize what the problem is with the Decepticon Hunter. They reattach the wire, and it's apparently working perfectly now. And the two of them are now going to work together to make Decepticon Hunters for the whole group. Wonderful idea. Because... Obviously, the toys all seem to come with uh, specific weapons, like the Bumblebee toy. Let me just grab it, actually. So you can see here, here's the Robots in Disguise Bumblebee toy. And you can see the, the weapon that he comes with is um, this uh, sword. And we've seen this sword before in that, I think it was, uh, was it Sideswipe when he got the Decepticon Hunter in that episode? Said, like, Proto Blaster, and it transformed into, the, like, basically this very sword. It was the same kind of blue color. Um, obviously the Hasbro weapons is just have the whole thing be transparent. But anyway, it seems like this is what Bumblebee's one is going to transform into a sword, kind of a Star Saber type thing. Which I really like the idea of. Um, I think that's a wonderful idea that they do that. Strongarm's weapon isn't transparent, but it is a type of blaster. And her little crossbow thing doesn't seem to do anything, so perhaps she'll get a weapon that can actually hurt people. That would be interesting. Sideswipe, will his also transform into a sword? I'm not sure. 
Or I'm not really even sure if they're going to end up actually doing that, where they all do get one, because I can't see Grimlock getting a weapon. Maybe they'll, they won't give him one because he doesn't need one or something. But um, just the idea that this would give Bumblebee, I suppose, a more of a trademark weapon, I think, would work well. And then I assume they'll do something with, like, um, uh, Steeljaw, where he gets some sort of a weapon and you have the main leaders have these special weapons, because... Uh, going back to the first episode um, that aired this week, True Colors, Mumblebee and, and uh, Steeljaw had their first uh, little fight, so that, that was a pretty... It was I think it was meant to be a big moment. It, was, it wasn't the best that it happened to happen in this episode, which maybe wasn't the best, but it was a, still a pretty cool fight, and there's definitely set up that they're going to be kind of rivals. That's going to be the big fight in this series. That's going to be the Optimus Megatron for this series right now. So I'm, I'm excited to see where they go with that, but um, yeah, going back to episode 9, um, the Decepticon Hunters thing is something I'm excited for, giving everyone new weapons, because right now, all the Autobot weapons seem completely ineffective, and they need something like that, because if there's one thing that the show is kind of messed up with, it's that right now, based on what I've seen, I really don't feel confident in any of these Autobots fighting skills all that much because they've been seen as just, uh, they're, they're literally firing like five or six blasts into people and it's just doing nothing. And it's just, that's not the way you do that. You're completely diminishing the point of that weapon when it doesn't do anything. Um, so uh, yeah, but overall, you know, the first episode not as great as maybe some of the other episodes, but episode nine, today's episode, I think I thought was really solid. I thought it was really good. Um, apparently, the first episode next week, episode 10, is going to uh, introduce a new Autobot to us, to us. so I'm not sure if that's going to be like a one-episode thing or if he's going to be sticking around, but I think that will add an interesting dynamic to the show because I won't spoil who it is, but um, it seems to be a bit more of a kind of veteran, a well-known character, so does Bumblebee know him? What will he add to the group dynamic? Will he kind of be like, hey, Bumblebee, you're not... Now that I'm here, you shouldn't be leader, I should be leader, or something like that. Um, but, so that'll be interesting. If there's one thing that Transformer shows always seem to get right, it's, you know, a new Autobot character, you know, appears to join the team. That It's something that consistently Transformer shows have done fairly well. So I'm excited for next week, but um, this week was decent. But uh, yeah, we're going into episode 10. So uh, that's been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.